the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center, known by its Spanish acronym CIMIT, works to improve maize and wheat science for sustainable livelihood. In Nepal, CIMIT has been working for 25 years in maize and wheat cropping systems across the country through a large number of diverse projects. One such project is the Cyril System Initiative for South Asia, Sisha. In collaboration with Nepal Agricultural Research Council, Ministry of Agricultural Development and private sector partners. This project has been working since 2009 on varietal development and dissemination. Crop management and mechanization in rice, wheat, maize, lentil and green gram, also known as mungbin. Reflecting on the inclusion of green gram in Sisha, Simit, principal scientist and Sisha project leader, Dr. Andrew McDonald. Sisha project is a USAID and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation effort at sustainable intensification across South Asia. Uh, we work in Nepal, we also work in India and in Bangladesh, and in the past we've also worked in, in Pakistan. And the purpose of this is to assist smallholder farmers primarily get more out of their systems, uh, but by maintaining the integrity of the resource base, the quality of their soil, the quality of their water, uh, while they get more yield uh, and more essentially more profitability as well. Uh, we made good success in Nepal. We've worked in the mid and far west development regions since 2012. Prior to that, we were in the central Terai region primarily. Uh, the country development plan for Nepal prioritizes uh, development activities in the mid and far west, and that's where we focused our efforts. Uh, we've had good success on the mechanization side, on the water management side, and also on the diversification side uh, for crops like mungbi. Uh, so since uh, last year, uh, maybe the last year and a half, we more intensively worked on mungbi, full value chain approach, uh, working on the agronomy, but also the market linkages. And mungbi is a less risky alternative than lentil. In Nepal, Starai, after harvesting the winter crop, the majority of land remains fallow for two to three months. The major reason for this are lack of irrigation, problems with free grazing animals, and a lack of information on improved agricultural technologies. Utilizing fallow land by growing short duration crops such as green gram, farmers can earn some income. Sisha has been conducting strategic research and development related to green gram in Bake, Bardia, Kailali, Kanchanpur and Surkhet since 2014. This program has focused on participatory varietal selection, identification of appropriate cropping system, integrated crop management, seed production and seed marketing. This program is operating in collaboration with the Gate Nepal Seed Company, Pathak Khadya Udyog, Kansanpur, De Bahar Mil Nepal Ganj, National Grain Legume Research Program, District Agricultural Development Offices of the respective district, the Kisan Project and Seed Group and Cooperatives. Explaining the structure and strategy of the Green Gram Initiative, seed expert of Sisha, Dr. Narayan Prashad Khanal explains. We have initiated this program with Green Gram producing seed companies, sailors such as millers, dalmod companies and dal producing companies. Likewise, to support this program, Agriculture Development Offices, Nepal Agriculture Research Council and Kishan have provided technical support. At the private sector, specialist seed companies have shown interest in the Green Gram Initiative. CISA has linked them with farmers groups and cooperatives on a contract basis. In 2015, seed production was carried out on 14 hectares through contractual arrangements between seed companies and farmers cooperatives. Green Gram grain was grown on 100 hectares by 600 households using the Miller's networks. As a result, about 100 ton mobin has been produced and Gate Nepal has been able to collect 10 ton seed. Green gram is considered one of the ancient crop of South Asia. It is cultivated in many countries of the world. 
Globally, it is cultivated on more than 600,000 hectares. According to Asian Vegetable Research and Development Center, the highest cultivating country is India, cultivating 270,000 hectares, followed by China, Myanmar, Indonesia, Pakistan, and Thailand. In Nepal, it is predicted that green gram is cultivated on around 13,000 hectares, producing 700 kg per hectare on average. Although this crop had previously been cultivated only in eastern Tarai district such as Siraha and Saptari, in the past few years it has also been cultivated in western district. Green gram or mungmin is popular for use in dal soup as it contains globulin containing protein and is highly digestible making it good for human nutrition. In relation to nutrition content, green gram dal contains 24% protein, 56.7% carbohydrate, 1% lipids and 3.5% minerals such as iron, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, copper and sulfur. It also contains trace amount of vitamins. The domestic and global market for green gram are large and in Nepal the market price is generally both stable and high. In Japan, Taiwan, China and Thailand green gram sprouts produced by germinating seeds after soaking for three to four days are consumed in different forms. One kg of high quality green gram seed can yield up to six to nine kg of sprouts. Such sprouts have enough vitamin C and minerals and less in phytate. It contains four milligram iron in every hundred gram of green gram, valuable for pregnant women and children. In the Nepalese market, the larger grains are used in dalmoth. Slightly smaller grains are used to produce sprouts and the remaining grains are sold for dal. Green gram biomass is also used as a feed and green fertilizer. A Sisha survey found that after three pickings, 30 to 50 kg per katha of grain could be produced and incorporating the remaining biomass can increase the subsequent rice yield by 15 to 20 percent. Explaining the value of moong bin biomass incorporation in soil, Dr. Dil Prashad Sechan. As it is a legume crop, it has potential for fixing nitrogen in the soil. Like other crops such as soybean, sisvania, it can also be used as green manure. It grain can also be consumed. Plus, after decomposition of biomass, it also adds nitrogen to the soil. As green gram contains nitrogen-fixing bacteria in its roots, a green gram field will have higher fertility. Talking about the importance of green gram in the rice wheat cropping system, Sisha scientist Mr. Madan Raz Bhatta says, After harvesting wheat and just before planting rice, land remains fallow for about 80 to 90 days. Since green gram manures in 60-70 days, it can be cultivated in the same field after harvesting wheat. It can also fix nitrogen in the soil and increase soil fertility. After harvesting green gram pots, the remaining biomass can be incorporated into the soil to increase the organic matter and improve the physical structure of the soil. Where irrigation facility is available, green gram can produce up to 1200 to 1500 kg of grain on one hectare of land in 60 to 70 days. Its market price amounts US dollar 1680 in such a short duration. It is possible to earn such a large income from other crops. Thus, it is very attractive to farmers. Talking about the benefits of green gram, farmers related to the program say, In April, May, land remains fallow, which is a waste of land. Such land can be used by cultivating green gram. This will give us grain and a profit of about 38 to 56 US dollars. 
After deducting the cost per katta of land, it also gives fodder for cows and goats. Another benefit is green manure. After harvest during plowing, we incorporate the biomass into the ground and it becomes fertilizer. As benefit, we look at it as major in terms of fertilizer. It is beneficial and also gives in cow. It also has high protein content. Land remains fallow for three months after wet harvest. It matures within that short period. Thus, it is good. I have already harvested one quintal. Next season, we are planning to grow in 10 katta land. Provides a stall, good for health, and soil also becomes fertile. Talking about the market demand and market system of Green Gram, Program Manager of Gate Nepal, Mr. Tika Ram Rizal. The first major thing in crop management is the seed management. This year, we are receiving 10 ton of seed from the growers. Our main task is to fulfill the seed demand and also in its dissemination, providing training to farmers, properly manage the seed and supply, such managed seed to deduce several organizations as well as to farmers. We are now focusing on mung bean crop, especially in our rice and wheat seed producing farmers. Knowing the farmer's response and market demand, food industry entrepreneur, Mr. Nabaraz Joshi. The price of dal is increasing, so its production is as well. Increasing market demand can be fulfilled by this crop, while farmers can also fetch good income. Likewise, it also increases the soil fertility. Because of these things, as farmers' cost of production will also decrease, as well as by selling even at current rates or even slightly higher in the coming days, their incomes will increase. This will encourage farmers. Thus, we have initiated this work. We are hopeful that it can produce a good harvest. With the current feedback, it appears that its production could go up to 50 to 60 tons of grain. If the production is higher, we could also get more mug bean for trading. Talking about requirement of further dissemination of the Green Gram Initiative, Agricultural expert of Kisan program, Mr. Rajendra Sahu. By fixing the nitrogen in the soil due to the noodles present in the roots of green gram, it will increase the rice production. Thus, to increase the rice production also, green gram cultivation is helpful. In coming days, its replication will rapidly increase. I am working with this in the field since very beginning. I am sure that its production will increase. The wave of interest in green gram brought about by this initiative has increased seed demand from different organizations as well as seed companies. Experience shows that to increase the further dissemination of green gram, new varieties have to be developed that could be harvested in a single picking. The crop should be viewed not only in terms of economy and food security, but also from the perspective of soil fertility improvement. Emphasis should be given to good quality seed production and disease pest management, as well as research on developing relevant machinery. It seems that if green gram could be disseminated and demonstrated by different programs by DADOS, it would help farmers increase their income as well as support sustainable agriculture.